Hello everyone and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to rig the windmill tower, raise it, and get it secured in the ground so that it can stand up to this bad Florida weather we sometimes have. Before all my help arrived, I attached the gearbox to the windmill tower. Pretty simple really. The male part of the tower slides in the female part of the gearbox and it's held together with a nut. I also dug four holes with a 12 inch power auger. The holes were spaced so that each one aligned with one corner of the tower. Now here's how I did my rigging. I attached a rope to the front of my tractor. The rope went over a high point or a gen pole to the top of the windmill tower. An additional rope went from the top of the windmill tower around a pulley attached to the front of my pickup truck to a second tractor which would act as a brake. Two additional handheld guy ropes were also attached to the windmill for stability. I decided to use the boom on my backhoe as a safety, just in case anything went wrong, the windmill wouldn't come crashing to the ground. Hopefully, if all goes well, when I back up the tractor, the windmill will raise and the brake tractor will keep anything from going too far or happening too fast. We're pretty close to the center, JB. Now we used the backhoe to lift the windmill the first few feet off the ground. This helped keep some of the strain off the rope. Now once we had the tower in place, I jumped on my tractor and eased the slack back out of the rope. Now here you can see the rope going over the high point or gen pole and then attaching to the very top of the windmill tower. Now you can see that the backhoe is disconnected. My orange Kubota tractor is holding the whole load. We used a 4x4 and some good old baling wire to rig a temporary base on the bucket of the backhoe. So we can use it as a temporary safety just in case of an accidental oops. Here's my good friend JB running my backhoe. I bought the backhoe from JB some time ago. He ran it for over 16 years and can operate it so smooth, he can pick your nose with it, if you have a really big nose. Up, 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 and away. Now I gotta be real honest, this is the point where things got really tense. Tell him just to ease off the brake just a little. It should be over center now, it should be on him. Nice and easy does it. Now once the tower was up, we had to make sure that all of the legs were equidistant from the well pipe. So it was time to make some minor positioning adjustments. And once again, the backhoe came in real handy. Here's JB, giving it the golden touch. It was hotter than two rats humping in a wool sock that day, like 102 degrees. Measure, measure, measure. And when you're done measuring, measure again. And then you're going to measure some more. And then we're going to measure some more. We're within two inches the whole way out. Each one of them is only about less than an inch out. So each leg is only a two inch differential all the way around. I'm okay with that. Oh yeah, we can do that by hand, brother. I don't even think we need to. I think the tower is bent and it's old and it's bent. I don't think it can ever be perfectly square. Okay. Now once the windmill was properly placed around the well, we needed to make sure that the gearbox was plumb to the well pipe. We did this by shimming under the legs and using a plumb bob to check it. Let's see where it's at. Yeah, 
where she said What do you think, JB? You think that's close? Nope. You don't think it's close? No. Now I want to point out the orange and black striped pieces of metal around the base. I installed these to help strengthen the legs while we were standing the tower up and also to give us a place to place shims temporarily while the concrete hardens. Now we cut shims of all sizes while trying to dial this thing in. Man, that's almost money right there. No, still not quite right. Now one tidbit that I learned and I like to pass along is even though we only had a very slight breeze that day, 40 feet of string gets affected by the breeze a lot more than you would think and it made getting the windmill plumb a lot more time consuming than I had anticipated. Finally, money! We pulled the boards from over the holes and dropped one of the legs that we made in episode 3 into each. Then we connected them to the windmill tower with bolts. They say it takes a village to raise a child. I can tell you that it takes a whole lot of friends to raise a windmill. First, I'd like to thank my wife for putting up with all of my crazy ideas, my mom for feeding everyone, and my dad for working harder at 79 years old than most young men can. Bob and Eric Wright, Chris, Britton, my good friend farmer Jimmy, my buddy Mike at Living Frame Photography for all of the amazing camera work. Off camera, my friend Craig Gallaty helped out a bunch assembling the windmill tower. JB Wright for that amazing tractor work, and my two sons, Bo and Luke, for always pitching in to help their dad with whatever crazy project I'm working on. Once all four legs were bolted up, we added six 80 pound bags of concrete to each hole. Since the groundwater was only two to three feet below the surface, we poured the concrete in dry and just added a little extra water to each hole to help mix things up. Now here's my oldest son, Bo, lending a hand. I'm not sure who's going to win here, the shovel or the dirt. And just like that, it was done. It's been uh, about two weeks since we erected the windmill tower and I'm going to go up there and just give the gearbox a little look through, make sure everything's working okay, nothing's worked loose or wearing funny. Wind's not blowing too bad today, it's got a nice little gusty breeze but it's not, uh, not crazy like it's been a couple days in the past. So I'm going to hop into my safety gear and we'll climb up that tower. All right, I wanted to give you a real quick look at the uh, safety gear. This is what I normally have been wearing to work up high. Um, this is just a Yates rappelling harness. It's pretty handy, but today I'm actually going to wear this harness. For those of you that don't know, I'm a fireman and I'm on a ladder company. And this is a, like a ladder belt and a tool belt and a rappelling belt all in one. It is life rated. It is life rated for rescue. A good friend of mine designed this a lot of years ago and they still manufacture it. The main reason I'm going to wear it is because it has a tool bag so I can carry some extra tools up there with me. I also have two sections of heavy Prusa cord with a follow through figure eight and a couple of D-rings on each end, carabiners, and I'll just use those to leapfrog one over the other so I'm always tied into the tower. Bungee cord just to tie off that wheel up there so if the wind blows I don't wind up looking like a raspberry in a blender. And I'm going to try wearing a head mounted GoPro. Never done that before but today is the first.
Alright, can you real slowly unfurl the windmill? Slowly now. Well, everybody, we're going to call this project a success. The windmill's back up there doing what a windmill does. There's not a water pump hooked up to it yet, but I need to save a few pennies, and that's a project for another day. Speaking of projects, we're going to build a water tower to pump water from this windmill so we can use it here on the farm. Where's that water tower going to go, you ask? Right over there where my old work van sits right now is going to be the home for the new water tower. I really hope you've enjoyed watching us rebuild this old windmill. I've had a lot of fun doing it and learned a lot of things in the process. Stay tuned and we'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook. Please, somewhere down below here is a link. See you soon.